It all began with a breakup, my senior year of high school after one and a half years together. I was devastated and had a hard time giving a shit about anything. Combine this with my lack of knowledge about drugs in general, and I began abusing rubber cement at school every single day. This went on for three months. Strangely enough, I had a companion on this journey, a friend who was as willing to fry off some brain cells as I was. I will call him T. Setting, a high school television studio, half full of high-tech video production equipment and half full of old brown electronics stuffed into boxes. We had one hour every day where as a class, we would go to the studio and huff rubber cement straight from the can. Nobody ever came into this room and our teacher was always preoccupied and rarely entered the studio. Part 1. The Initial Effects At first, huffing provided a high much like alcohol or a low dose of DXM. We enjoyed its effects immensely as we knew we would be sober in 10 minutes tops and ready to go back to class. The first few weeks we thought nothing of it, just had fun on the stuff. It would seem the longer we used the glue, the stranger things got. I began noticing hallucinations, light patterns on the walls, looking down on my body and feeling as if it weren't mine. The glue can would become a part of me as I inhaled, and when I took it away from my nose, it was as if I was pulling part of my face off. The feeling of deja vu was intense. I truly felt I had done this as a child, but could not recall it. My friend T had all the same feelings and hallucinations I had from time to time. We both experienced weird emotions that seemed alien to us, and often drifted off into voids of thoughtlessness. Part 2. Falling Through the Glue Can A regular hallucination we experienced was falling through the glue can and coming out in a parallel universe of sorts. Everything was the same, but ever so slightly different. It was an amazing feeling. I would often feel as if I was talking to five to six different people as I went from dimension to dimension, but it was all just tea. After a while, the smell of the glue became amazing, and it started even looking beautiful. This struck me as very strange. These hallucinations were the extent of the experience for two months, and the experience was intense. The patterns on the wall would begin to take on colors, and my body often felt segmented into different pieces as I tried to walk. It was not until the third month near the end of the experience that the truly horrific visions began. Part 3. The Inhalant Entities I began to hallucinate people. I remember the time I saw a woman's finger protruding from the wall, extremely realistic. Just staring at it felt like I was touching it. Then it got scary. I started seeing people all around me with shopping bags like I was in a mall. Other times, they would be doctors or school students, but I was often surrounded by people all staring at me. The feeling of someone being in the room was always present. When T would leave to use the bathroom or something, I would forget he ever left and be surprised when nobody was there and horrified when somebody completely different was in his place. One time, I saw a mechanic working underneath my desk. I could hear his tools clinking around. Auditory hallucinations were common and unsettling. Whispering, creepy singing, and distorted laughter were all heard at times. Also, the sound of a hum, a pulsing sound that came from above our heads. I fell under the delusion that this sound was the source of our visions. We named the sound Durden. It just seemed like the right name. Part 4 transformations. I remember one day in particular where I had a truly ghastly hallucination of my friend T. I was sitting there next to him discussing something school related and huffing deeply from the can. The next thing I know, I am paralyzed and cannot move. My friend T is sitting hunched forward and his face looks as if it's made of wooden puzzle pieces. He slowly reclines back with a creepy painted on looking smile on his face. His face begins to break down and organize itself into different people. I am in complete terror as I witness this, unable to move a muscle. I want to scream, but I can't. I black out and the next thing I know I am laying on a table with my fingers in the glue bottle. I simply laughed it off, but once I fully remembered the experience, I realized it was one of the scariest moments of my life. That was basically the end of the school year. Me and T graduated and parted ways. He never used the glue again, and I have not touched the stuff either. 
Conclusion The hallucinations from Glue started small and turned into horrifically realistic distortions of reality. These were unlike anything psychs, dissociatives, or any delirium showed me later in life. The hallucinations were intensely tied to my emotions and always surprising. I would not recommend this to anyone. I was lucky not to experience noticeable brain damage for my endeavors. My hope is that my recalling of these events will give people insight into the inhalant experience and scare them away from getting curious. I had my first sniff of glue just before my 12th birthday. I am now 16 and glue has become an enemy, an enemy I thought I needed for what seems like a long time. It was my friend for a while. I now know just how messed up glue can make anybody. I have been clean now for about a year, albeit I have succumbed to cravings on perhaps half a dozen occasions. When I do slip up, however, I haven't gone on a bender, nor has the session been as long. This transformation in me stems largely from my man, who I started dating a year ago. He despises it when I take glue, although he is very supportive of me when I slip up now. He tells me it's a lapse, not a relapse. He told me the one thing he hated more than anything, and there was a lot to dislike when I was sniffing, was the blank look I would get in my eyes. He told me it was a look he had never seen before, and he has been a poly drug addict for about 7 years and counting, so he has seen a lot of people wasted on a lot of different things. He keeps me strong, and I have to be. Glue can, in fact, definitely will mess me up in all sorts of nasty ways. I used to do it because of the intense high. When I was on it, I would feel like I was in a completely different world. I could sit for hours, often alone, immersed in a world where there are actually two worlds, and some place in between. Cars would make strange noises, like the Doppler effect, over and over and greatly amplified. Music I had never heard before, like rock and roll, a genre I don't follow at all, would flow through my brain. One time I was watching the news, and the presenter suddenly broke into what I thought I could hear was rapping. Audio hallucinations are a major part of the glue experience. Noises would sometime lead to open eye visuals, or OEVs. I once heard a loud noise, only to see a row of large pine trees wither and die while I could only watch, helpless to control my response as I still had the bag against my mouth. I saw unicorns at train stations and watched the moon get progressively closer to Earth. My cousin would appear to have drastically different hair to what I knew she had, but perhaps the most intense, and therefore alluring, effects of sniffing are the complete mental backflips it can cause. I would look at ants and believe they were in fact my friend's parents preparing to go to the airport to fly home to England. I thought the police came to me, one crouched before me while the other stood behind her, and these weren't exactly OEVs. They were more like a deep belief that something is happening and there is no need for visual proof of that event. It's very hard to explain the experience to people who have never done it, but basically, it messed me up big time. Imagine the feeling of nitrous oxide bulbs, whippets, and multiply it tenfold. In that regard, glue and all other inhalants are very different to the other psychoactive compounds I've ingested, and that, sadly, is a fairly long list. Because us sniffers can't get the high we seek without doing nerve and organ damage, the crash is as physical as it is mental. I wake up with sore legs, a headache, aching arms, and a general feeling of anger and frustration at the way my body feels. Then there's the crime, the antisocial behavior, the alienation from society at large. I've committed breaking and enterings, more often than not simply out of glue-driven curiosity and disregard for consequences rather than financial gain. I stole a car from a car yard, drove it up the coast. I was high, the bag was always close to my mouth. It was pouring down rain and I had two passengers. Somehow we got to the north coast, about 120 kilometers away, and then back. After the event, I could only remember parts of the evening. I was wasted. I would snap really badly at my boyfriend and regret it after sobering up. I have cheated on partners because of how badly that shit can affect my judgment. 
I've been to court at least 10 times and I'm well known to the police. And sniffing glue has certainly been at the root of many of those interactions. As for any brain damage cause, well, that's the biggest irony of all. How could I possibly be objective in making that assessment? As for other people who know me, they come and go so fast. My family, however, have never said I changed or seemed fundamentally different to who I was, and they have seen me fairly regularly since I was a little kid. Things are better now, and I know that there is a new way to live. I avoid seeing old mates who still sniff, even if it means I spend time worrying about how they feel when I decline their invitations to socialize. But I have to do it. I'm not that strong yet, but every day I get closer. There's more to life than the glue. Choose life.